Number 56. At what flow rate might turbulence begin to develop in a water main with a 0.2 meter diameter? Assume a 20 degrees Celsius temperature. All right. So we know just by virtue of the uh, question of what flow rate might turbulence begin, you have to think about, well, how do we know if turbulence will begin or it won't? And we know that we have certain cutoff points for the Reynolds number, right? The Reynolds number, which is N sub R, when this number is greater than 3000, it is considered turbulent. When the Reynolds number is less than 2000, and this is 300, right? So where's that extra zero? There it is. Uh, the uh, flow will be considered laminar. Anything in between those values would be considered kind of a mix of turbulent and laminar. It's not really classified as either one. Some books also say it's greater than 4,000. It has to be. So there is some variability to these values. Any case. We know that in order to classify something as turbulent, we need a Reynolds number greater than 3,000. So I'm going to start with my Reynolds number formula. Okay. So let me just move this over a little bit. So the Reynolds number, the formula tells me that it's equivalent to 2 multiplied by the density of that flowing fluid times the velocity of that flowing fluid uh, times the radius of the tube or the you know, uh, radius of that flowing fluid divided then by uh, the viscosity. So this is water. So we know the viscosity of water. You have to look it up if you don't know it. And the density of water. All right, again, you have to look that up if you don't know it. Now, the thing is, we're trying to find out at what flow rate. And we're looking at this and we're saying, huh, what? Flow rate? Uh, where is Q in here? Well, Q is not in there. Okay. But we have to think about what variable could we get Q into. And the one that looks most noticeable to me is that we can relate Q to the velocity. Right? Via the equation on the right-hand side. So... We have that the flow rate is equal to the cross-sectional area multiplied then by the velocity. To solve this for velocity, it's just simply the flow rate over the area. And then we can expand on the area if we want. So it's a tube, right? So it's pi r squared. So now what we can do is basically take this and plug it on into my, our, our equation. All right. So plug it in for v here. So now when we do that, all right, we have the Reynolds number is going to be equal to 2 multiplied by the density of that flowing fluid, which is water, multiplied then by the volume flow rate of the water, divided then by pi times the radius of that tube squared, times the radius of that tube, all divided by the viscosity of that water. Now, if you notice, a simplification can be made here. The radius here will cancel with one of those. And now the equation works out to look something like this, that the Reynolds number will be equal to 2 multiplied by the density of the water, times then the flow rate of the water divided by pi times r, all now divided by the um, viscosity of that water. So here's the formula, okay? Now, I know this equation isn't solved for q yet, so why don't we, uh, why don't we do that, okay? Now, you can reorganize this slightly, right? If the pi and the r, and I'm gonna do that in this picture, all right? The pi and the r, uh, essentially are in the denominator of this numerator uh, fraction, right? This fraction is in the numerator. So what we are allowed to do algebraically is just take these two variables and bring them on down into that denominator overall, all right? Now, that makes our life a little easier now in terms of uh, being able to solve this for the Q. Now we can just do some cross multiplications, right? I want to solve for Q. It's already in the numerator on the right-hand side, so i got to bring all of these other variables away. So how do we do that? Well, just bring them across the equal sign. So basically this moves down into the denominator on the right-hand side. Okay, let me get rid of my little box actually. All right, this moves down into the denominator on the left-hand side, excuse me, I think I said right-hand side. I gotta figure out my left from my right. And now the denominator on the right-hand side has to move up to the numerator on the left-hand side. And that's it, you have your equation solved. Put in your little division line, and here it is. This is it. Okay, nice and easy. Get rid of the parentheses, I'm just cleaning it up, move this closer, and there it is now. All right, so this is your equation. Now, we know that uh, what we wanna do now is we wanna figure out what flow rate might turbulence begin. So I know this is technically the case, sometimes they say even equal to, again, it's a little variable, 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take essentially 3,000 and plug it on in for that Reynolds number. All right, because I know that that's the point at which basically, you know, the flow rate is going to start to become turbulent. Anything higher than this 3,000 is going to be definitely some turbulent flow. All right. So now that assumption out of the way, I'm going to plug in all the values. Okay. So here's my viscosity, uh, viscosity of water is 1.002 times 10 to the minus three, assuming it's at 20 degrees Celsius, which it is times pi. And I realize I'm going to run out of room. Uh, sorry guys, I'm going to do it on the other side. So this is going to be, this is going to be the viscosity. So 1.002 times 10 to the minus three times then pi times the radius. Uh, so this is the diameter just, and that's already a meter. So just divide that by two. So 0.1. Okay. Then multiply that by 3000. And then divide this whole thing by two times the density of the water, which is 1,000. And then we're going we're gonna to get the value of the flow rate, just at the point of which it starts to become turbulent. So 1.002 times 10 to the minus 3, multiplied by pi, uh, multiplied by 0.1, multiplied by 3,000, then divided by parentheses 2 times 1,000. And here we go. So the, the volume flow rate is going to be... 4.72 so 4.72 times times 10 to the uh, minus 4 and this is in terms of cube uh, cubic meters cubic meters per second all right um, yeah so that's basically that and, and if you you can convert that into liters per second if you wanted and liters you know liters per minute if we were to convert that into liters per minute multiply by 1,000 and then uh, multiply that by 60 as well. And we realize that's about 28 liters per minute, which, you know, I know this question didn't ask if it's reasonable or not, but uh, I wouldn't want my home supplied by that water main that supplies that amount, okay? I mean, I'm assuming that's the, uh, that's the water main in the street supplying all the homes, but if that's the water main supplying your particular house, that's probably fine. But anyway, all right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.